Hello everybody. Welcome to my Shalom Zone. My name is Sherry Dawn and it is my great honor and privilege to get to share this grace encounter with you today. If you've not already subscribed, I would like to invite you to do that once you've listened to the content. Proverbs 16 and verse 24 says, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Now, pleasant words are not the same thing as flattering words. People can use flattery on you, and all it does is turn your stomach because you know that their words are not from their hearts. But pleasant words, the Hebrew word noam, means suitable, pleasant, grace words. Those words have the power to sweeten the soul and to heal whatever happens to be wrong. The Word of God, the Gospel of the Kingdom, is full of pleasant words. And we want to pass them along and to share them at every opportunity because there are souls that need to be sweetened and bodies that need to be healed. So I would encourage you to like and to share and keep it moving forward. Decree with me some of these kingdom truths. The Lord is the saving strength of His anointed. In His favor is life, and He shows us His salvation. I will praise the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endures forever. I will go out with joy and be led forth in peace because the battle is the Lord's. Yes, it is. Amen. And the victory's ours. How awesome is that? <laughs> All right. Uh, scriptures for these statements of truth and faith from the Word of God are found in Psalm 28, verse 8, Psalm 30, and verse 5, uh, Psalm 50, and verse 23, Psalm 136, verse 1, Isaiah 55 and verse 12, and 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 15. You should be able to rejoice because as a child of God, you are anointed by the same Holy Spirit, the same anointing that is on Jesus. You'll find that in 1 John 2 and verse 27. God's saving strength is extended to you and nothing you face has to be done in your own strength alone. So daily tap into his strength. Freely receive what he has so freely given because it's your birthright as a child of God to be able to go in the strength of the Lord. All right, I want to read to you out of John chapter 13, Gospel of John, verses 16 through 19. This is the night that Jesus is betrayed and he's sharing with the disciples important truths. And he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. So and this is after he's washed their feet and Judas has gone out to betray him. And Jesus is telling them things ahead of time, but his purpose for doing that is so that when it came to pass, they would believe. Then you go on over into John 14 in a very similar statement, verses 25 through 29. Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you that I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I go unto the, my Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe. Okay, so he was 
telling them the Holy Spirit's going to come. I'm leaving my peace with you, and I'm sharing these things with you ahead of time so that when it comes to pass, you will believe. Now, I, was, I shared all of that from the scripture to help you understand that there are times that the Lord will reveal things to us and we, we just we just don't get it. We just don't have a clue. I mean, we'll pray about it. we put it on the shelf. we think about it. But it may be months. It may be weeks, months, years before we find out. But when we do get a verification and we do get revelation on the situation it solidifies our faith because we realize he already spoke into this all this time ago before i found out about it now and i've recently had a situation like that uh, come to come full circle in my life uh i had a dream in february of 2011 and in this dream, I was talking to someone and pointing out the presence of an Antari, or Antari, or however you say it. I was standing on a plane, just, just like a desolate brown, I mean, I could close my eyes, I can see it now, it's just so vivid in my thinking. But I was on this, this plane and looking off into the distance and I could see a row of, I couldn't tell if they were box cars or houses, so they were just kind of long, low, structures buildings but on the back side of these structures and completely dwarfing them was what looked like a huge black snake it it would put you in the mind of the the, the color and the texture of a black inner tube if you've ever been familiar with one of those and i said to another person the entree literally stretches from here to there and back again it's, i don't care which direction you looked on the horizon that entree that snake was it was everywhere and it was just blocking the horizon you could not see past the snake and uh so as far as the eye could see from left to right on this plane, that huge black tube was stretched out. Suddenly, the dream switched, and I'm armed with a sword, and I'm standing inside one of these rooms or structures, whatever they are, and I was trying to avoid detection while I looked for the kill point. I remember looking through the door, which was taller than I, but the snake was even taller than the door. I, I could barely see the top of the snake. And it's just, it's just there, just blocking, you know, everything. So I was trying to avoid detection while I looked for the kill point. And all of a sudden, I'm joined by a lady that I knew was a princess. I don't remember if we ever said anything to each other. Uh, I just noticed that she had red hair and her, uh, it was just, looked like it was just fine as a baby's hair. And, and very creamy skin, and she was helping me to find a way to deal with that Antari when I woke up. Well, it, that was just, oh goodness. And so it, it reminded me of the scripture in um, uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 14 after I, I got up and read what an Antari is, because up till that point, I had never heard that word in my life. Never been exposed to that word. So I got up and, and I went uh, to my computer and got on the internet and to see what I could find. And uh, I found out that, uh, the first thing I found out was that there was a village in India that was named Antari. And uh, then I bumped into some New Age website and somebody was uh, talking about the Antari and having interactions with the Antari. And this is a quote from that website, and I'm, I apologize that I did not have the sense to take down the note, the website, and, and all that kind of stuff, the details. I just was half asleep. But I just wrote down, you know, it happened in 2011. But I wrote down these words and put it in my journal, and just, and I've been looking at it, praying about it different times, on and off, all these years. But this is what this person said. Antari are described as light beings from the star group Antares. 
these supposedly loving creatures, according to this author, are rewriting human DNA to heal us and to take us to a higher plane of awareness. Well, at the end of 2023, I had another dream about Antari, which awakened all of this again, gets me started seeking again. This time I looked on the internet and I found out that Antari is actually a Sanskrit word, which is one of the dialects of, of the Hindi people. And it's a word that means to go between, to stand in one's way, to intervene, and to separate. And so that, that immediately resonated with me because that's what that tube, that snake, that creature, because I never saw a head on it. It was just this black tube, and it was straight. It was between the houses and the horizon. You could not see past it. It was just there. It was in the way. And then, as I kept seeking, or, you know, searching on the internet to see if anything else that I could find out about the Antari and whatever, I found another <laughs> book written by somebody. And this is called the Antari from Antarius, and this is by Loya Huckfield. And uh, she said the Antari are on a mission to assist us in transforming our energy body to accept high vibrational star codes from higher dimensions. Within this book, it is hoped that a glimpse into the workings of the light body is achieved. So, uh, it didn't take me very long to figure out that these persons are, are having interactions with fallen angels, unclean spirits. They're calling themselves the Antari. They may be from the star group Antares. I don't know. What I do know is that they feel the bill, the description that Paul wrote about in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, that says, No marvel, if for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And so they're presenting themselves as these beings of light, and they're wanting to help, and they're wanting to heal, and they're wanting to raise us up, yada, yada, yada. And the only reason that I'm sharing this now, because when I first had this dream, I didn't tell anybody. For years, I never told anybody about this dream. I eventually, sometime within the last, I think, two or three years, I told my prayer partner. And then this past week, I shared it with the Bible study group, and we prayed about it, and then I shared it with the church. So, and then now I'm sharing it with you. I want you to understand how deadly this stuff is, because it, it's... <laughs> while they're presenting themselves to be beings of light and wanting to help and all that kind of stuff, they're literally obstructing and blocking things because that's that's what it means and the scripture tells us in romans chapter 12 and verse 2 that we're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds not talking with fallen angels and we're to be renewed or transformed by beholding the glory of the lord not by communing with fallen angels let me read that scripture to you in second corinthians Chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, this, it, the scripture says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image. That's a transformation. From glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. So when we look at Jesus, when we behold how wonderful he is, as we meditate in the scriptures, as we hear the word of God, as we receive revelation of his great love for us and the sacrifice that he paid for us and we keep feeding ourselves on that, we're transformed as we behold his glory. His glory is his goodness. When Moses asked God, show me your glory, God said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. Well, Jesus is the express image of the Father. When you see Jesus, you've seen the Father. So when you see the goodness that's flowing out of Jesus and what he was doing, you're seeing the Father's heart in action. That's how we're supposed to be transformed from glory to glory is by looking at Jesus. We don't look at our yuck. We don't focus on our failures and shortcomings. We look at him, his perfection, his beauty. And the Holy Spirit changes us into what we're beholding about him. Nowhere ever does it tell us to get in contact with these angelic beings from other places and have conversations with them. In fact, this is one of the ways that you can identify whether or not you're being approached by a fallen angel or a holy angel because holy angels never stick around to just have conversations for the sake of conversation. 
They come to deliver a message. They come to perform a task, but they always, always point to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the minute that you take your attention off the Lord Jesus Christ and off what he's wanting to do, they're gone because they're not going to rob him of his glory and his attention. But now these fallen angels, oh, they're so cuddly and they are just so smooth and they are wise and oh, they just, they just absolutely spellbinding with the things that they present. And that's the whole purpose. They're putting you under a spell. And you don't play with that. You always check whatever voice is talking to you or whatever vision is speaking to you. You command it to tell you that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, that he was born of a woman, that he is the son of the living God, that he was crucified for your sins and raised again for your justification. And if this spirit will not confess that, Shut it down. Got no business listening to it because all it is is a trap. I came to understand as I was reviewing this recently and praying about it yet again that the princess was simply representing another child of God who understood who she was in Christ Jesus and was in the power of agreement as we were searching for the kill point to, to get rid of this thing. <clears throat> And the sword, of course, is the sword of the Spirit, which Ephesians 6, 17 tells us is the Word of God. But for so many years, I, I didn't have clarity on what what is the kill point. I mean, where, where on earth do you stab something that big to kill it? How would you find the heart? And I was looking at that all wrong because uh, when the Lord ministered to me what he did a uh, week before last, when I was up in the middle of the night and I was praying for somebody and um, the scripture floated up about all those that war against you shall be as nothing. And then the Holy Spirit just immediately said, so call them nothing. And then when I began to research that, and I think that showed up on your YouTube feed either last week or the week before. But anyway, when I began to research that, I realized, oh my goodness, this is the kill point. This is the kill point. So let me, let me read that to you again. Isaiah chapter 41, I want to start reading at verses 10 through 13. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now this is written to the seed of Abraham. We are that seed of Abraham in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3.29. He said, Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Now, I shared with you on that previous teaching that those unclean spirits hate us. Oh, they are incensed against us. They despise us. And it's a furious, burning hatred. We cannot even begin to conceive the depth of it because we're made in the image of God. They hate God and they hate us. All those that were incensed against us are going to be ashamed and confounded. Now, that's their destiny, and you have the right to expect that to happen. You have the right to expect to open your mouth as the one that's in authority in whatever situation that they happen to show up in and speak against them and have it to throw them into utter confusion. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Perish is from the Hebrew word abad, and it means to perish, to be destroyed, to be undone, to have no way to flee, to fail, and to lose. I like all of that. But when it also said they shall be as nothing, and then verse 12 says, Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, thee they shall, that were with thee, shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. They shall be as nothing. Nothing is from the Hebrew word ayin, and it means to be nothing or to not exist, a non-entity to be gone. And a thing of naught, naught is from the Hebrew word ephes, and it means to just end, come to an end. The root is aphes, and it means to disappear, to cease, to be clean, gone. But God's not playing games. And so this is what he has proclaimed. He declares the end from the beginning. All these that are incensed against you, all these, these that war against you, this is their destiny. So speak it out. I've already said it. You get in agreement with me. You speak it out. You establish it in the earth. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Well, that just... I'm a right-handed person. If I'm going to be poking something with a sword, it's going to be with my right hand. 
And that just lit me up because God's holding my right hand. And I don't care how big and bad and ugly or entrenched or eternal that these beings may try to present themselves to be. God has already declared the word that's going to pierce their mangy hides and let all the air out. And when I shared at the, my Bible study group, one of my friends later on shared with me that, <laughs> that she was hoping that I would speak up, you know, by the Spirit and just poke a hole in it and let all the air out. And it just, well, I had not had that image in my heart, but buddy, after she said it, I'm not letting it go. Because I realized I didn't have to look for a specific point. I didn't have to look for the heart, didn't have to look for the lung, whatever. All I had to do was just poke it with the Word of God and it's going to let the air out. And glory to God. <laughs> all right, so with all that in our thinking, I'm going to share this decree against the Antari. And any time that you come up to a situation where there's just something blocking, there's an interference, and you just can't seem to get around it, ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of this. Come back and listen to it again. Take time to write it down for yourself. I'm keeping a notebook, say, of decrees and things that the Lord gives me to speak out against in various situations. And I don't, I don't make it a law that I have to do it every day, but... I keep it on top of the piano. When I walk by, if I'm feeling prompted and then look at that and I keep being drawn to it, I'll get it down and I'll ask the Lord which ones to speak out, and I do. So we're being led by the Spirit. We're learning to be led by the Spirit in everything. He knows what needs to be dealt with at any given time of the day in any given situation. But He's not giving us these things, these battle strategies, uh, to just lay them aside and not use them. This war is real, and we're not taking prisoners. And the few that we are taking, they're winding up over there in the cage at Babylon. Um, but we're not, we're not interested in prisoners. We want them off the planet because that's what the Scripture says is going to happen to them. So this is the Antari decree. Because it is written, Thus shall you say to them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. And because it is written, Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, and they shall be as nothing. They that strive with thee shall perish, thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Because it is written, you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. And Jesus, having spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. We decree in agreement with King Jesus against you, Antari, and we call you nothing. Your destiny is to perish from the earth. By the blood of Jesus, we destroy your influence. By the sword of the Spirit, we remove your interference. You will not feed off the worship of the deceived. Your spell is broken, your lies are exposed, and you have no place to flee. You are undone. We release holy angels to war against you till you are no more. Father, we forgive the humans who have opened doors to these fallen ones. And by the blood of Jesus, we cover those doors and we command those doors to be slammed shut and sealed. We ask you to grant the humans repentance to acknowledge the truth and to turn from this wickedness. Bring truth and revelation to light that will cause them to remember and turn unto the Lord. Where this sin abounded, we decree that grace now does much more abound, and we call forth your glory to cover this earth as the waters cover the sea. Cut this work short in righteousness. And in the mighty name of King Jesus, we release the whirlwind of the Lord to uproot and utterly destroy and abolish the entire. Amen. And to be in agreement, all you have to do is just be in agreement and say amen. And every bit of agreement counts. It helps. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and bless your ears to hear. The Lord bless you and bless your eyes to see. I want you to hear His voice and to see His ways. The Lord bless you and raise you up to flourish in the presence of your enemies. The Lord rise upon you and cause his glory to be seen over you that people may be drawn to him because of you. 
grace and peace be multiplied unto you that you may stand in your place and carry out your assignment and live each day expecting to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. May you live to be at least 120. Hope you said amen. Let us pray. Father, every day that I live, I am so thankful that there is nothing hidden unto your eyes. All things are naked and open to your eyes. There's, they're just, they can't get away with anything. And I just, I am so grateful that, that you shared that with me when I didn't have a clue about anything. It wouldn't have meant as much to me back then as it does now after you've been teaching me for the last couple of years about these fallen angels and false gods and demons being the same thing. So I, I appreciate it so much, Lord, that you did that. And I pray for all the body of Christ, for all of these things that, that you have shown us things ahead of time so that when they came to pass, we could believe. Help us to recognize that that's what's going on. Help us to be grateful and help us to be thankful and to, to be so much more aware that you are God who declares the end from the beginning. None of this stuff that's happening surprises you. None of the things that our governments or the, the demonic realm have planned surprises you. But oh boy, you've got some stuff in line that's going to surprise them. So Father, I pray for all the body that they would get their attention off the circumstances, off the surroundings, off the yuck, and look unto Jesus and be transformed by beholding Him. Be transformed by the renewing of our minds according to the new covenant of grace and peace. And understand that what you've done for us is so much greater than anything that the enemy can concoct. That we may stand with great boldness and with the, the righteousness of the kingdom and the joy and the peace of the kingdom radiating from us. Not only stand our ground, but press forward and take back the enemy ground that has been stolen. Father, I praise you that your hand is stretched out against the wrath of our enemies. I praise you that you are working salvation in the midst of this earth. I praise you for this time in which whosoever will just call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you for bringing forth that revelation. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. All glory and dominion be unto you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ooh, all right, dear friend. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. And I'll talk to you later.